Harrison, my first impression of you was one, just that you were so nice, um, just such a friendly person. Uh, and the second impression um, that I had was just how astute your political observations were. I mean, you had only been working for a couple of years before you came to CCAN, all on political campaigns, um, and shared with us how, you know, though that can be impactful, uh, politicians can also let you down, and that pushing them to do the right thing is where you wanted to be. Tim Harrison, five years ago, when he was a young kid, was here was this mild-mannered kid who always overshot his organizing goals. If he wanted 10 people on a grassroots call, he'd wind up getting 20. If his goal was 50 people for a rally, he'd have 100. And he stayed likable while constantly organizing like a monster in the background. He was amazing. But I do remember the first time that I met him, like, I'll be honest, I was a little bit in awe just because Harrison, we're around this and I around the same age. And I mean, to put it in this way, I guess, like, I was like, oh my gosh, he's like such a boss. <laughs> like, he's the Virginia director. We're around the same age and I was just starting out and just like seeing him and how passionate he was about it. And, um, you know, it just like really kind of like inspired me in some ways and made me even like push myself to do a little bit better. He was like, oh, I don't know. I think maybe I want to lobby. Um, I don't know, Dewan, who was our Virginia director at the time, he has a law degree. Maybe I need a law degree. He's like, uh-uh, Harrison, you don't need a law degree. You're going to do great. Um, and he was promoted and he became our Virginia director and he did in fact do great. Um, so he's always wanted to, you know, push himself and, and do great things and he has done great things. Harrison, you've grown from the little brother that I didn't know I wanted into a wonderful husband, movement builder and great friend. I've seen you grow from a field organizer to navigating the halls of Richmond and being a crucial part of stopping the ACP and bringing Virginia's strongest clean energy law. And I'm so, so proud of you. So it's just a great thing, Harrison, to see you grow and to see you continue to just uh, uh, maneuver this movement for our people. But it's also for me personally to see uh, you, uh, just how well you are able to just articulate and just um, and illustrate the climate crisis for so many different types of people. Um, your, your, your work in the halls of uh, Virginia and Richmond have become legendary. And so how you've been able to shape policy because we know either you shape policy or policy will shape you. So Harrison is only the second person in CCAN history to go from organizer to state director in five years or less. That's like going from the pit crew of the Indy 500 sports car race to the checkered flag driver who wins it all. Uh, of course, driving an electric sports car powered by wind power. Harrison has grown so much. I mean, I've known him four years now, and just to see him go from a perfectly great and competent organizer, um, but pretty siloed, to just running the whole show in Virginia. Um, Harrison, you know, not just with CCAN, but other groups, uh, people really look to you as, as a leader, and it's just been amazing to see. Uh, Harrison, I think your biggest accomplishments are being a badass, um, but also leading the Virginia team to so many victories on pipelines, on policy. Um, I think also, uh, I hope you're proud of everything you've accomplished, like um, being invited to join the EJ board, um, as well as I think you should be proud of your own personal accomplishments as well. This year, you did a lot. You bought a house, you got married, adopted a dog. You're doing the most, my friend. Uh, 
Um, Harrison, I think your biggest accomplishments are personally meeting and marrying Bria. Uh, she's fantastic, as you know. Um, and you just, you know, seem like a happier person overall uh, since having met her. So um, congrats on that. Uh, and professionally, uh, there's a lot of accomplishments that you've had here at CCAN, obviously, but one thing um, that really sticks out to me as um, a person who works in the organization building arena is that more than anyone, I feel like you've brought CCAN to a more justice-centered place. Um, you know, from the moment that you hit the ground in Hampton Roads as an organizer, uh, you were prioritizing relationship building and outreach to the region's communities of color and making sure that we were amplifying the stories of people personally impacted by sea level rise. Um, you know, and you showed up time and again to other people's efforts, other groups' efforts, and built our connection with the faith-based communities in Virginia and really reaching out to new people every chance we could. Um, and then internally, you know, you've helped to push and guide and lead on these issues of, of justice at CCAN, and I'm, I'm really grateful to you for that. Harrison, you have accomplished so much. Uh, just, I think, filling it at life. You have this, you know, amazing life, amazing house now. You've had always such a strong sense of purpose and clarity, and, and to now be able to move into the fundraising world, which I know that you've been wanting to do. Um, it's incredible. I'm so proud of you. Awesome. Well, Harrison, as you know, it was, it was great to work with you um, in our work for climate justice. Um, we were able to stop the Atlanta Coast Pipeline and, 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 make, that, and make that happen. Uh, your work and working with many of the folks on the ground in Virginia have now become a blueprint for how many of us are working on the issue of stopping pipelines and particularly lifting up the vulnerable communities or the sacrifice zones in our communities to deal with this issue. Uh, I remember one of the funniest moments with Harris and probably, I think it was the first retreat that I was on and we all were supposed to bring a object uh, to represent ourself or our path. Um, and of course he forgot his object. <laughs> I think Brooke also forgot an object and a couple of other people. Uh, but uh, him and Brooke just cracked me up so much because Brooke grabbed like a rock or some type of like weird piece of sculpture off of a shelf and he just like grabbed a big book <laughs> that was in the house um and they both just like managed to pull it off and use both of those props like to tell their story and it, it just everybody was just laughing and it was really great <laughs> I remember a fundraiser once where Harrison and I were both the featured speakers and I was nervous and taking notes behind the scenes, getting ready to give a speech. And Harrison was next to me drinking a beer, not taking notes, easy peasy. Then when we gave our speeches in front of legislators and high power donors, he knocked me out of the water in terms of the quality of his speech. So I don't know if that's funny or whether I'm crying inside. Harrison. The funniest moment that I've had with Harrison was, of course, at our retreat with some snickerdoodles and our late night drinking sessions. So I'm sure you remember exactly what my funniest moment is. And it's the whole evening, just the whole entire evening of that Capital Correspondence Dinner. Um, when I got sat next to the Dominion PR guy and just had a had a rage fueled, you know, yelling at him, and then you were able to just take me around to bar after bar after this dinner uh, because I still needed to yell at people who liked gas in Virginia. Um, so met, allowed me to like meet legislators that I could yell at and other people that were pro gas, and it was just that was just like a hilarious, really fun night, and one that I'll always remember.
Hello, Harrison. I have to admit that when I heard that you were leaving CCAN, I was bummed. But I later learned that you are staying in Virginia, you're staying with the climate movement. So that made me less bummed because we really need you. We really need you, Harrison. Your country needs you and your planet needs you. I, in working with you over the last few years, it's been obvious to me that you have just the qualities needed to fight effectively for our climate. You're smart, hardworking, you have a good sense of humor, and you are tenacious. And that tenacity has really stood out in my mind as a great asset that you have and one that is obviously very, very needed if we are going to protect our climate. I've noticed during the legislative session that you worked hard not just to pass good bills that will help protect our climate, but you even work to make the bills better. I mean, there's so much in this business of, uh, of watering down really good bills um, like ours, and you fought in the other direction and helped make the bill stronger. So anyway, I hope you will keep doing legislative work in your climate action future because you are really good at it and we all salute and thank you. I'm personally grateful to you, Harrison, for fighting so hard for our climate. It's really great to see young people, people of color, people who are hardworking and really get it about our climate and our future. So I know this is a time of big transition for you as well as for CCAN. So I would just like to add my voice of thanks and I wish you all good things in your future. And I hope that we will stay in touch. Thank you, Harrison. Like, thank you for just being so inspiring and such a motivator and an influencer. Uh, I consider myself so lucky to have had the opportunity to have worked with you on the same team. And um, just that, you know, he made such a difference and he really does make the world a better place. So, yeah. <laughs> to him. Harrison, it has been amazing to learn from you um, and just so awesome to just watch how dedicated you are and poised and um, just plain spoken about very complicated issues and what a great example you are to me and all the rest of our coworkers and how you balance so many great parts of your life as well with Bria and Taki um, and your family and buying a house and, and just everything you've done so much in the time that I've known you. Um, and I can't wait to see what you're going to accomplish in your next job. And I'm, I'm so excited to um, watch, watch as a friend from, from a little bit afar. Um, so I wish you the best of luck. And thank you so much for making um, my beginning of my time with CCAN so, so special and so wonderful. Well, hopefully you already know this, Harrison. But I just want to tell you that I really appreciate you and admire your leadership style. Um, you keep your cool, you speak truth to power, uh, and you care deeply about people. And you'll be able to do whatever you choose um, and go far because of those qualities. I feel really lucky that you brought them to CCAN for the last five years. Keep in touch. Harrison, the sky is the limit for you and that you will go on and you've already done so many great things but you will go on to continue to make change in Virginia and around the world and never lose your sense of humor and your calm demeanor. And I'm honored to have you as a friend and to work alongside you all these years. Harrison, it's been a long time since a Virginian occupied the White House. Now that you're leaving CCAN, we really want you to aim high and we're gonna get impatient, so please, Get going on that. Well, first and foremost, I mean, it's been an honor to work with Harrison and to um, be with him in this movement. I think that clearly from when I first met him, he was exceptional and you are exceptional and uh, looking forward to great things from you moving forward. We need that. but. I've definitely just seen you grow in understanding this movement and your role. Clearly the work you've done um, for CCAN has been exceptional and wonderful. And 
I know that everybody will say they will miss you. I know that I will miss you in that capacity, but look forward to work with you in your new capacity. Watch out for all those tequila shots. I know that's how they get you in return. Just watch out. 